All right, how's it going, everybody? We just got done with the live stream. Camera was here for most of it. Um, we changed over the squeezer here from honey to sugarcane. So it's now doing us reed water. And we are getting plant remains out of that. Um, this is going to get moved and put over here with the rest of these. Um, I'm actually turning both of these off. Uh, so they won't fill inventories anymore. And we're taking this pipe out of here for the moment. And getting all of this back out of here. Because I want this to get worked through all the stuff we have in there so we can get rid of that chest. That chest is in a terrible place. Um, I have no idea how that's even getting... Oh, it's coming from there. Yeah, you need to stop that. Um, don't go that way anymore. I don't want you in there right now. We're going to take that chest out of there. Um, but we're now running reed water into our fermenter instead of honey. And it works the same exact way as the um, honey did. But we get two parts of it. Unlike the honey that is usable. The honey got put over here. Along with the beeswax, which there's like 20,000 beeswax in there. That's completely useless. Um, I'm going to set up a centrifuge for that because uh, I realized that I made a mistake when I did this. I thought the squeezer was exactly the same for uh, the honeycomb. All of Greg's stupid stuff we don't need. But if you look at honeycomb, you get one beeswax and 90. Where if you do it in the centrifuge for a regular honeycomb, you get beeswax, a 10% chance of a propolis, and 100 honey. So you get more honey by centrifuging it than you do by squeezing it. And you get a 10% chance of the propolis, which I'm not real worried about now. Um, we're currently doing the regular bees in there. So this is the honeycomb that we would be getting. But we do have the industrial bees out there that are making the other combs that I would have to try to find here that we could put into the system if I can find them in this uh, let's see be easier to find them this way uh, that sandy sticky we have these so we could put these in which would give us latex directly we wouldn't get the honey and then we'd get 30% um, chance of sticky propolis and that will give us glue and latex from it where the regular propolis will give us the same thing but I think we get more out of the sticky uh, this is 144 to 50 this one is 36 and a thousand so you get less latex way more glue out of the sticky so maybe we'll change some of them over to that. Um, but the girls uh, will want the honey for uh, cooking stuff. So I'll leave some of them, the bees that we have. Um, but that means that we're going to have a lot more biomass. As you can see, this thing is just uh, running full time. And so is the distillation tower out there, which means that we will have way more dynamite because um, we'll have a lot more glycerol 
its uh, only limitation right now is the glycol coming in from the uh, distillation tower. So we could even make it faster if we made the distillation tower faster, but I don't think we need to make the distillation tower any faster for this. It's uh, going at a pretty all right pace. But it's running full time now, as you can see, which means we'll be making more uh, biofuel, which will give us more power because it'll be able to get burnt off downstairs. Uh, the other thing that we worked on today was in the kitchen over here. Tamara made me a lot more burgers. And we went through her meat fridge here. And as you can see, she has cooked meat bars. We went through a lot of meat. And this is what we built. Basically, she throws any of her scrap meat up in there. It gets shredded down, comes into the extruder, and that makes her her cooked meat bars. Every one of those scrap meats give you two mincemeat, and the mincemeat makes one cooked bar. So all the scrap meat you get when you kill animals can be turned into these cooked meat bars. And because it's ran through the extruder, which is a heater type machine, it cooks it automatically. We don't have to run it through an oven. Um, and basically that's just got an electric motor for the shredder, electric heater for the low heat extruder, both of them with automatics on it. And then 2X cable. I showed on purpose that if you tried to use 1X, it would burn them up because of the loss and explained it in the stream. Basically, each one of these will try to pull 64 EU to make 32 RU or HU. And because it has one unit of loss, one EU of loss, it would technically get 63, but it calls for the 64, so it actually calls for 65. So therefore, it has to send two packets. One packet with 64 in it, well, one packet of 64 that would get broke into 63 and one for the loss, and then one that has two in it, one for the loss, and one to make up for the one that was lost in the other one. So you need to use 2x, or you can technically um, throttle these down with a tag. Um, I, I always use 8 to throttle them in half. Um, but you could use one of the other ones to throttle it more or less if you wanted to. But it's, you know, no big deal to make a 2x cable to run through there. Technically, if I wanted it to be lossless, I could have made two transformers, put one here, one here, and then put the MV transformer here. And then I wouldn't have to worry about the cables and it would be completely lossless. But... I'd rather not worry about it and just do it like that. And then similar things done for the fermenters over there. It's just LV transformer, MV transformer. But that's what we got done for the day. We also made up a bunch of mass storages. So I have some when I need them because I had ran out. And my tungsten steel has gotten done over here. So we should have enough that we can start making the two large centrifuges that we need to make. And we need to also look at starting to burn off some uh, more fuel, which is good. I was kind of worried about us running processing on fuel um, and running low. 
um, our distillation power is turned off because we're full of petrol. So that's always nice to see. I also think we're going to set up a uh, monitoring system for that. I might have to talk to XAR and see um, if he can help me with setting up like a um, open computer that can monitor how much is in each of those tanks and then put it over there in the other building. That way I know how much is in there. I think that would be a nice idea if I can get him to come on here and help me uh, figure that stuff out because I don't know how open computer stuff works. And I think he had one, well, I know he had one for his reactor, so shouldn't be too difficult to set up for that. But, uh, yeah, that's what we've been working on. I'm going to start cooking up the titanium so we can get the large sluice done. Um, probably when I start making the next time we're here which we're talking about coming back here on Friday. Apologies for not being here for a week or two, whatever it's been. With streams or videos, Junior started a new job that instead of working at night, now he's working in the morning, so... Everything's gotten fluctuated on when we do things. Um, and I'm trying to figure out when I want to do this that people will be available to watch and that I'm not, you know, dead tired. I may start doing it... Um, at like 4 or 5 in the morning my time which would be great for people that are in the um, UK or Europe horrible for people in America um, but the videos will be available or the streams will be available and I'll do um, the review also I'm going to be restarting the GT4R series now that we've gotten the ore uh, distribution stuff changed around a bit um, and all of Steam Age should be ready to go so I'm going to be throwing some streams up in the next week um, getting the beginnings of GT4R done for anybody that's interested and would like to come and hang out and ask any questions about GT4R. Um, also, the GTI stuff is going to be renamed to GT5R. Um, it's just a name change. Basically, um, GTI, as I have always said, was never going to get completed, and it's not. It's going to be completed as GT5R. GTI did not make any sense. Nobody ever knew what in the hell it was. GT5R will be easier to um, for people to understand what it is. And it matches with the GT4R. Um, which for anybody here that doesn't know, GT4R and GT, GTI slash GT5R is GT4 reimagined. It's what we think between Trins and I that Greg would have done with those projects not if he had came to Modern Minecraft but if that project was done with a little bit of hindsight from what came past it so a little bit of GT5 and a little bit of GT6 and GT4R but still done in that same style of being a IC2 add-on type of thing for the GT4R, and then GT5 with a little bit of GT6 stuff thrown in. 
for the GTI slash GT5R, um, which is in 118 currently. It'll be going to 119 probably around the first of the year. Um, but those streams will continue in the evening when Trends is available to do them and we have stuff to do. We do them together, so I don't really want to do those streams uh, too awful much without him being there so he can kind of know what the hell is going on since he's pretty much just a coder and I kind of give him the inside of the Greg Tech side of it. He kind of needs to learn the the Greg Tech part too, so that's why I like to have him there when I'm doing everything. Once we get the basic stuff done and get on to um, developing the hard setting stuff, I may do a GT5R basics playthrough, which will be either by myself or with Junior or the girls or something. Uh, we'll look into that then. But anyways, I have sat here and rambled long enough. Have a good one, and I will see you guys next time. Uh-huh.